Hi, and welcome to How Do I BI, a mini part screencast series on using SQL Server Analysis Services 2008, which is based on my book, Smart Business Intelligence Solutions with Microsoft SQL Server 2008. I'm Lynn Langett, a developer evangelist with Microsoft in Southern California. In this edition, we're going to take a look at some of the procedures that you can use to scale OLAP cubes. Before we head to the screencast, we're going to talk about frequently asked questions and gotchas around OLAP cube scaling. This is actually a very, very large topic that, again, like some of the previous screencasts we've been doing towards the end of the series, really warrants more discussion than simply just looking at the procedures. For the purposes of this presentation, though, we'll highlight some of the most uh, commonly used procedures around OLAP cube scaling. The first of these is to implement linked objects. Objects can be linked um, at the level of a cube or an individual dimension, and I'll be showing in bids how you do this. This has implications around scalability because you can actually partition where the object uh, processing and the object querying is occurring. In addition to linking objects, you can also link partitions in the enterprise edition of analysis services, and these partitions can be uh, stored on remote servers. So the partitions, of course, can be uh, implemented in different storage uh, types. They can be MOLAP, HOLAP, or ROLAP, as we discussed in, in previous screencasts on partitioning. There are also other advanced server settings than ca that can affect scalability. The gotchas, as I mentioned, are that most of these features do require the enterprise edition of analysis services. And I'll remind you that using a non-default method of storage for your partition, in other words, HOLAP or ROLAP, will require more aggregation to get the same level of query performance uh, because the uh, underlying data is, of course, not stored in a multidimensional format. Also, I'll caution you to change any of the default server level settings uh, with consideration. I will reference in the screencast a very useful white paper around SQL Server 2008 Analysis Services scaling and um, performance as well. And with that, we're going to go to the screencast. In this screencast, I'll be showing you some processes that you can use to implement scalability for OLAP cubes. In order to do this, using bids, I've loaded the uh, sample and opened the sample cube adventure works and we'll just go through some of the different areas that you can use to implement some uh, processes and procedures for scalability. The first of which is in the cube structure tab um, and uh, this is one place where you can implement linked objects. So uh, to implement a linked object, you simply click on the button that's included and that'll open the linked object wizard and then you click next. You must then select um, a data source. Now normally you obviously wouldn't select the current database because you would be uh, linking to something remote, but uh, just for the purposes of demonstration, I'll continue to uh, do that. And then you'll note that the available objects include anything other than the current object. So for this particular data source, we have one additional cube, and you can select to link cubes or um, parts of cubes, and those parts can be objects contained in the cube. In the case of this mind customer's cube, it's a very, very simple cube. It has a contained action and it has a calculation. And again, you would do this to uh, scale uh, the processing and the querying across multiple physical servers. So you can link uh, cube objects to one another. That's one place that you can do this. Another place that you can do this is inside of dimensions. So if I open up the dimensions container in the Solution Explorer and I right click it, in addition to creating a regular dimension with a context sensitive menu, I can create a new linked dimension by clicking on that menu option and that will open the linked object wizard. If I click Next, then I select a data source. Again, we've got a local data source. We'd normally be selecting a remote data source here. And click Next, and it will uh, display in the Select Objects dialog box of the Linked Object Box wizard all of the objects that are available. Again, this example is not uh, making um, business sense because you normally would have a remote object. I just don't have more than one object set up. Uh, for demonstration. And in this case, there would be the list of all the dimensions, and then I could simply select the dimensions that I wish to link. And because this promotion dimension already exists on the server, you'll see that it's automatically renamed so that there are not naming conflicts. And then this dimension would be uh, linked. So I'm going to cancel out of this, 
And then the next area inside of bids that you could use to implement scalability would be uh, around partitions. And in a previous screencast when I talked about partitions, I talked about it in the context of performance and archiving. It's also uh, something that you can consider in terms of scalability because in the Enterprise Edition of Analysis Services, if you click New Partition, uh, a wizard will open and then click Next. You'll have to select a measure group, a partition source, um, and available table and then click Next, and if you wished a query to um, uh, restrict rows. And uh, then the third step of the partition wizard is you select the processing location, which can be a current uh, server instance or a remote analysis uh, server data source. Again, this is Enterprise Edition only. And then you select a storage location, which can be the default location or a specified uh, folder. So uh, this is around where partitions will actually be uh, placed. So this is a, another place that you can uh, implement scalability. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this because we don't really want to create a new partition at this time. And then I'll talk about another location from within bids where you can implement scalability for your cubes. If you um, right click on a cube and then in the Solution Explorer and then you select Process, that will open up the cube process dialog box, which will give you the opportunity to select how you're going to process this particular cube and all of its contained partitions. If you then click on the change settings button, that will open a child dialog box, which will uh, allow you to more granularly control how processing is actually implemented on this particular cube and all of its partitions. And how this can impact scalability is if you have a server with um, multiple cores. So you can see the processing order by default is set to parallel. All objects will be processed in a single transaction. And the maximum parallel tasks option is set to let the server decide. You can change this, and the values available in this dialog box are from 1 to 128 different maximum parallel tasks. So this is a setting that you can use to control uh, scalability. In addition, uh, you have the sequential option, and the default is to process as one transaction. If you collect, uh, click on the dialog drop-down box there, you have the option to use uh, separate transactions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here, and cancel out of here. And then I'm going to pause this, and we're going to go over to a different tool that we can use to impact scalability, and that's SQL Server Management Studio. Now we're inside of SQL Server Management Studio, and we've connected to Analysis Server. And one of the uh, areas where you can implement some changes around OLAP Cube scalability are server level settings. And there are more than one way to access these, but probably the simplest way is to connect in SSMS and right click on the server itself and then click on Properties, which will then open the Analysis Server Properties dialog box. And the properties are displayed in two ways. The simple set of properties, and uh, to, just to give you an example of a property that might uh, be changed based on scalability and performance requirements, uh, is the log flight recorder. And this we had mentioned earlier when we were talking about query performance tuning. This can add overhead because you're actually logging queries, and it is actually by default um, uh, not enabled. So if you enable it, um, for a particular query tuning reason, you may then want to turn it off. In addition to this, we have um, uh, aspects of the uh, server which can be uh, configured here around memory, around network requests, around OLAP processing. Now, these are very advanced settings, and they should be only changed for a, a specific business reason, and you cert should certainly uh, test the results and document any changes you make to the default configurations. Beyond the basic properties, if you click on the Show Advanced All Properties checkbox, you will uh, be uh, able to work with even more advanced properties on the server, things like uh, timeout, locks, uh, so on and so forth. Again, I do caution you to uh, use these with a, a compelling business reason. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this, and then I'm going to uh, switch to showing a very significant white paper that if you are uh, considering implementing any advanced changes for scalability or performance, I highly recommend reading. This is the SQL Server 2008 Analysis Services Performance Guide. It's a technical article written by Richard um, Thakchuk and Thomas Kajer and uh, available just from searching on the internet.
And this has uh, some very significant detailed information about improving performance that goes well beyond this short screencast.